Our next story is about a group of courageous women who came together at a retreat to change their lives as veterans. Following this story, we'll be talking with one of these women, a veteran herself, Tia Christopher, from Swords to Plowshares. Here's that story now. This is an opportunity for you to kind of treat yourself. Like it's a way to validate that you're taking time for yourself this weekend, that that's important and that you're worthy of that. I'm at the Lodge Retreat Center with 24 women veterans um, from all branches of service and um, mostly from Iraq, Afghanistan wars, OAF, OEF. This woman's retreat, it kind of grew out of just things that I've always wanted. And so I was like, hmm, what would I like in a perfect retreat? So I approached Elizabeth Hawkins with One Freedom and my boss, Amy Fairweather, was, was real excited about it. And so we came together and we fucking did it. Okay, everybody find a partner, and then here's, I want you guys to be aware, find your space. I want you to be somewhere where you don't feel crowded beside someone else. While I came here to um, maybe tell parts of my story or just get answers for myself about my story, um, it's been incredible to listen to others and see how much we're alike. Um, and just feel that sense of connection that I've been missing. The officers I've dealt with in the Korean Navy were, they come this close, I keep stepping back and they keep following me. <laughs> <laughs> this happens and they don't get it that I'm walking away from them. Right. And they keep coming in every time I retreat. But I realize now that um, um, it's not normal, that this is not a normal boundary for everybody. Everyone has a different I was gonna say, boundaries. I don't think there is a normal, everyone's is different. I've really appreciated everyone's input over the weekend and their willingness to share with each other and I think that that's brought about a really sincere bonding. Because I'm used to it, I'm fine to a certain degree where I can see you but if we were to do the exercise from the back like I don't if you're standing behind me I have to turn around and face you I have to be able to see. I, I didn't do I that on purpose because that's really triggering for people <laughs> to have someone coming from behind. I even open up a little bit because I never cry but I actually shared tears um, the other day and I just didn't get the courage to say my story because I wouldn't get the first word out without crying because like I said I'm a very strong person and I never cry but this has uplifted me. Since discharging from the military, um, it's been really difficult to connect and build friendships with people because there seems to be a new criteria for me when forming and meeting, forming relationships and meeting people. It was like angels started singing when I walked into a group of um, really amazing women. Being able to open up and be able to share some things that I haven't been able to share in years. Um, this was a great opportunity for me to grow and challenge myself. I didn't realize right when I got out of the military how much I needed the veterans community and how much um, it really fulfilled my life to see other women vets and what they had been through. Doesn't matter what branch they were in, um, combat or not, um, we're all the same community. We all love each other. Uh, yeah. Anybody who's ever what I was struck by most was the sense of isolation and disconnection these women came in with and then as I witnessed and we worked over the weekend. What I saw was the incredible strength that they all had underneath that. And I saw women coming, feeling broken, and leave feeling hope and having new plans for what their tomorrows would be. I'm a stronger person. I feel more reassured in where I am in my life and how I'm dealing with things. And um, 
just a really exceptional, amazing experience. And I feel very blessed to have uh, been able to participate in it and hope that all veterans will be uh, able to participate in the future. I also want to encourage people in the civilian community, um, Americans um, around our nation to become involved, volunteer, because veterans, while they may be only 1% of the U.S. population, are coming back to your communities and need your services and your support. Joining us now is Tia Christopher. She's the Woman Veteran Coordinator for Swords to Plowshares, one of the groups that helped to organize this retreat, and she's a veteran herself. Tia, happy Veterans Day and welcome to In Their Boots. Thank you, Dan. And can you talk about some of the groups that were involved in organizing this retreat and what they put into it? Well, part of the reason why this retreat was so special is because it was a collaborative effort. So One Freedom and uh, Brave New Foundation and so, uh, Source to Plowshares and Vets for Vets and Air Compassion for Veterans all came together. Um, and were also, their efforts were supported by the DOD and VA. Have you been to other I, retreats, I guess, that, that aren't uh, female specific? And what are the differences? What, what makes this special? Sometimes, like, I love kicking it with my male veteran friends. I mean, we all have stuff in common. But sometimes I think we can tend to belittle our service or, um, or you know, our bravery or our experiences or maybe get embarrassed or uncomfortable talking about them. And when we're with other women veterans, we have that sense of community and understanding and trust. So even though um, this might be the first time meeting someone, you already have this bond of shared experience. And um, I've been to a lot of really great um, retreats that are springing up um, for veterans. And I've been to um, a women's veteran retreat before, but one of the things that made this unique was that we had active duty and veterans and really reached out to the Guard Reserve community because, well, that's just real important. We're all serving or we all have served and um, we do have this bond. And um, as, as service providers, you know, with Swords to Plowshares, it's our responsibility to, to really help create a cohesive community and um, to reach out to those, you know, who will be veterans someday. So a lot of um, this retreat was made up of if I could have everything I'd ever want in a retreat for women veterans, what would that be? And what have some shortcomings been in past retreats that, you know, if I'm going to gripe about it, might as well change it. I mean, you know, that's one of the things they teach in the military, do something about it, you know. What do these retreats offer uh, that traditional systems don't? Well, it's a safe space. We have ground rules right when people come in about confidentiality and respecting each other. And we want all women to just feel really safe at the get-go. And um, we try to give just a time for just peace and contemplation. But I mean, everybody's coming from different perspectives, backgrounds. Some people are more comfortable um, doing meditation and doing yoga. Other people, that's really not their thing. So we try to have um, activities that um, were appropriate for everyone. And the fun thing was with yoga um, is a lot of people tried yoga for the first time and they loved it. So I found that some of the activities led by um, Elizabeth from One Freedom and you know yoga and some of the different um, activities that people would normally have never done, everyone was open to trying everything because they were just so excited to have their own space, to have a retreat. And they're like, listen, you know, I need some chill time. I need a retreat and I want to try anything you guys are offering because it's I, I got to believe it's going to help. And so everyone came with such an open attitude and we had people in their mid 50s and people in their early 20s um, and every branch we had officers and enlisted and everybody really came open and um, got a lot from it because of that. See, uh, thank you for being a part of In Their Boost today and happy Veterans Day. Thank you, Dan. Happy Veterans Day to you.